Okay, continuation of arc length angular speed and uh, just a couple more minutes. I just want to finish up this example basically and that should, that should be enough. So this notion of angular speed is how many revolutions or how many radians worth of angle do you do in a certain amount of time and it has nothing to do with how big the circle is that you're on. So let's get uh, a decimal for that. 2 pi over 24 that's going to be let me just calculate that on my calculator off screen here. That's 0 0.2618. And per, that's per hour. And if I wanted to, I could put in radians to emphasize that it's, that's how many radians per hour I do. Now, that's not a super familiar thing to talk about how fast something is rotating in terms of how many radians per hour or radians per minute or radians per second you go. Because radians is a new thing for f in, in general for us. But it turns out that that is a very, very useful quantity. Now, you can always think about, you can always go back to revolutions. One revolution every 24 hours is a little bit more um, understandable. Before I, I go to another calculation that goes off of this, let me talk about how suppose I compare somebody standing really close to the North Pole, real, way up high in the Arctic, and I want to think about how fast he's rotating and how fast the guy on the equator is rotating. Now, the equator, the point on the equator and the point n near the North Pole, they both go around the axis once every 24 hours. They both do exactly one revolution every 24 hours. So they both do 2 pi radians every 24 hours. So they both have the same angular speed. And that's like uh, like a CD or a record or anything, or like a DVD that's spinning around. If I have a point that's close to the center and a point on the rim, they're going to have the same angular speed. They go around the same number of revolutions or radians every second. But what's not going to be the same is their linear speed which is the usual way of measure of speed, like centimeters per second, or meters per second, or uh, kilometers per hour, or, wh or whatever. Um, because this guy is going further in the same amount of time. This guy is going less far in the same amount of time. Similarly, on the Earth, somebody really close to the North Pole is not going to be going that fast. And if you're standing right at the North Pole, you're going to be rotating in place, but you're not actually going to be moving. Whereas this guy, we're going to discover very quickly, is going uh, very, very fast, in fact. So, that's something that's very important. Angular speed is the thing that's the same on some sort of any kind of rigid body that's rotating around, no matter how far you are from, from the, uh, the center of rotation. So, let's figure out the linear speed of a person standing on the equator. I remember when I first learned this, and I was just amazed by this. Um, so let's see. Well, let's see. Let's use s equals r theta. This tells us how much theta we do in 24 hours. And all we have to do is figure out what does that correspond to in, um, in terms of linear motion, in terms of how far you go. Okay. So in 24 hours, How far are we going? We're going s equals r theta. And that's going to be the r, we're going to put in the 4,000. And the theta you do in 24 hours is 2 pi worth of revolutions. And that's the 24 hours. Oh, and this is 4,000 miles. We really need that unit. So we're just putting in r theta. So to symbolize it, it's r theta over t. Let's say t is the time that we're doing and s is how far we've gone. That's s over t. And this is just v. It's a good letter for speed. It really is for velocity, but it's a good letter for speed as well. And so the speed is how far you've gone over how much time it took. This is like d equals rt stuff. In this case, we're figuring out how far you went because we know how much angle you've gone around, exactly 2 pi radians. And you, we know that's one revolution. And we know the, um, the radius. And so what we get, it turns out to be, if you actually calculate that out, it's 1,047 miles per hour. And if you're not on the equator, it turns out you're not quite going quite so far. We could actually figure it out. That might be a good project. Uh, we're probably going uh, something like 800, uh, maybe a bit more, actually, miles per hour right now. 
reading this, listening to this, you're going 800 miles an hour relative to the center of the Earth. It's pretty amazing. Um, so let me just summarize this, see what equations we get, and we'll definitely work with this some more. We've got omega, that angular speed, that was how many radians do you do in a certain amount of time? That is, figure out how far you're going in terms of radian measure and divide it by time. The velocity is just how far you actually went in terms of arc length, actual distance walking around the, the edge or pizza crust or whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's s over t. Well, s is r theta. And so what we get is actually something nice. If you happen to have calculated omega already, like we had, we could have done this in a different way. We could have taken this rather strange looking number, 0.2618 radians per hour. And if you multiply that by 4,000, well, it's just about a little bit more than a quarter. And if you multiply that by 4,000, you get something a little bit more than more than 1,000. And so, and here that is, it's that 2 pi over 24 was still in there. And so, this is one of the reasons why omega is such a nice quantity, is it's related to v, the linear speed, in the same way in the same way that s and theta are related. So theta is an angle measure, and you multiply by r to get angled, uh, actual linear distance, arc length. Omega is an angular speed. You multiply r to get the actual linear speed, v. A lot of symbols flying around here, but we're going to do it um, with a lot of explicit examples and get a feel for these, these concepts. And it's a good first use of radian measure.